Hello everyone, this is Alex from Menu Docs, and in today's video we will be returning to our Introduction to Web Development series. And today we're going to be adding in some images, a button, and maybe a link. If you all have not watched the last video, make sure to go check it out before you watch this one as we are building off of the last video again in this episode. If you haven't watched any of the episodes in the series, make sure you start at episode 1 so you don't miss any of the episodes and any of the work that we're going to be putting in in this series. So guys, let's hop right into the video. But before we can dive into our video here on the Menu Docs, all of this would not be possible without our sponsor, Oxide Hosting. Today's video is proudly powered by our partner, Oxide Hosting. Get your products hosted by them with their cheap, reliable services. So what are you waiting for? Check them out in the description below. Alright guys, first off, I would like to thank you all for all the support on the series. Second, I would like to let you know that if there is a specific item in the episode considering recovering five things in the episode, and you would like to go to it directly, I'll have timestamps to all the sections in the description. Also, if you watch through the video, I'm going to be having transitions at each spot that we move to a new topic. But that's not why you're here. So let's dig in. I mentioned in the last episode that I would make this video longer since the last two have been pretty short. So let's get chugging on in buttons and images. So guys, to start, it's time to revisit our head element. We're going to be making our favicon today. The favicon is the image that is like the thumbnail for the web page. The image will appear in the tab for our page just like the chrome icon when you're on the Google website. To do this, we need to add a link element. Links are elements that do not need a backslash version, just like the break tag from last episode. So, we make a link tag just like that. And we're going to cut out all the stuff in here. We're going to be using link tags a lot when we get into CSS, but that is, that's always off. So, tell the website that this is our favicon, we need the rel element, which is right here. Rel is a style sheet. What this means is that we're defining a link for the style sheet, and that this favicon is going to be defined by the style sheet that we are putting right here. To do this, we're going to be inserting icon into the rel uh, section. Now let's add in our image. To do this, we're going to make a new folder. In the, we're going to name this folder image, but I'm going to name it IMG, and you'll see why later. But for now, we're just going to name it IMG. The reasoning for this is that we're going to be putting all of our images for the rest of the website in here. Not just one image for our favicon. Now to do this, we are going to quickly uh, copy a file over to our image here. And we are going to rename it to favicon. And the reasoning for this is this is just going to help us keep organized. Now, back in the code over here, inside of our href tag, we're going to set it to the path to the image we just added. So to do this, if you don't know how to uh, change paths, you can usually copy them directly from the image itself. And it's not that hard. And make sure you get your ending right, because if you don't have it correct, it's not going to display it. So guys, we've just added in our favicon. That's awesome. So now your website tab isn't just going to have that little gray globe of it's a website. Now, favicons are cool and all, but let's add some images to our actual web page. We are going to be creating two types of images in this episode. One is going to be a local image file, like the one that we just put in our image folder. And just like the favicon, makes it easy to remember. And the other one is going to be a link. And the reason that we're going to be doing a link is because we're going to be 
doing things with links m later on in the series, so it would be good to know how to use links now. In our case, the link for the image is going to be from uh, Gaiazo. So let's start with the local image. Just like in the favicon, we need the file in our image folder, so I'm just going to drag this over and in. Now, I would recommend the local version of images as it's going to make it a lot easier and you don't have to rely on an external website to be up and available for you to have the images on your page. It's also less complicated. So we're going to actually create our image now. Now I named the folder IMG because our image tag is IMG. There we go. Now for our source right here, we're going to be adding in the path to our image file. So dot slash image menu docs one dot jpg. There we go. And we're also going to add in an alt. The alt tag is just going to give us some text to be displayed if the image cannot be loaded. It is usually helpful to those who have slow internet connections or images blocked on your web page. I'm just going to do menu docs because that's what the image is. Now on to image type 2. To start, let's add in a break tag. This puts our images on different lines and not the same ones, so we don't have really long strings of images. For our case, this is pretty important because our next image is rather big. But you don't actually need to break the lines. If you want to put multiple images on the same line, go for it. Now, let's form our image linked. To make this, we need the A tag. A is a hyperlink to another section or website, but it can be used for a lot of things. We're going to get into those in more detail in another episode, but we're going to use them twice today. So in our href tag here, we're going to be adding the link. The a tag does need to be closed. Keep that in mind because we're going to be putting information in here. So let's actually define an image that goes in here. So we're going to make another, hmm. huh. we're going to make another image here. And in this image, we are going to be defining another source tag. And in here, we're going to put our actual link to the image that we want. Now the really neat thing about Gaiazo is they give you the HTML code export button. So writing this, you just copy and paste in. It's not that hard. We're also going to add another alt to make this look a little more professional for people that don't have images enabled on your web page. And there we go. Those are our two types of images. Now that we have the two images on our page ready to go, let's dive into buttons. As our final topic for this video, let's make a button and a link. Links are pretty easy, so let's start there. To make a link, we again need our A tag. The reason for this is because we're going to be hyperlinking to another website. So to do this, we're just going to add our link in right here. And there we go. There's our link. So as it is, there's a link on the page, but there's nothing there to tell you there's a link. So we're going to put something inside of this A tag so we actually have some text to look at. So menu docs website. There we go. And with that, we made a link. Now let's do a button. This one's a little more fun, so let's add a line break. This is going to take a little bit longer than everything else we've done this episode, so get ready for some buttons here. Alright, buttons. There are a ton of ways to make buttons. I'm only going to be showing one in this episode, and it's going to be the simplest that I know in pure HTML. 
I'll be doing a huge button revamp and an explanation of how buttons work more in depth when we get into CSS because we can create much more beautiful buttons and we can also make them work a lot better with CSS. So hang on for that, we'll get there eventually. For now, let's make a form tag. Forms are technically images, but at the same time they're hyperlinks. And on top of all of that, they're also buttons. So we are going to give this, instead of a class, I don't know why it's giving us class here, all we need is action. Our action that we're going to be adding is the link that we want it to go to. Now for this, I'm still going to be using the menu docs website because who would want to use anything else, right? And now we have an interesting tag. Now we have an input tag. Input doesn't need to be closed. We're using a lot of not closed things in this episode. But as you can see, it gave us a type, a name, and a value place. So for our type, we're going to define it as submit. Now the reason we're defining it as submit is it's like a submit button on a Google form. When you click it, the link activates, and you continue. Under name, we're actually going to name the button. Now the reason for this is if you have a lot of buttons and you want to use the form action sequence and write in CSS to make it look pretty without changing this, you can give it a name. So we're going to name this MD button, but you can name it whatever you want. And the value here is going to be the text that's going to appear in the button. We're also just going to give this menu docs. So guys, there's a little more to get through on this one, but I tried to make it a little faster. That way you aren't bogged down with 25 minute explanations. There you go. You have a button. All right, everyone, there's your longer episode. I would like to take a moment again to thank you all for all the support on the series here. The support has been amazing, and I'm so glad all of you all are enjoying the series. If you all would like to interact with some of the other amazing content creators here on Menu Docs, or you would like to come talk to me, or at any point get help with your code, please join the Discord. Link's in the description. Thank you all for watching today. It's been a great episode, and as always, happy coding.